Sometimes I can't help but wonder where people get their information from and how silly they are to not only believe it, but actually go public with it and show their complete lack of common sense or intellectual prowess. So this video is specifically for a man called Othmar Brunner, who I sincerely hope gets to see it. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to another edition of My Take on China. And today, I'm going to introduce all my viewers to Othmar's thoughts on China, or at least the thoughts Othmar was able to collect and put into writing. I'm sure there are more that he has. Let's break this down. Number one, the Chinese economy consists of Western, mainly American, multinational corporations. Wrong, Othmar. I'm not sure where you get the Chinese economy consists of Western, mainly American multinationals from. China is fundamentally a socialist state. 50% of the economy is state-owned. Of the remaining 50%, the finance industry is state-controlled but not state-owned. Some people and corporations and overseas might have shares in that, but that's not affecting the fact that they remain Chinese-controlled. The property industry, which has thousands of developers, was recently shaken up and restructured. Two of the developers were Western financed and they were indebted massively to Wall Street and other mainly US asset management companies. Both of them are now in liquidation and the real estate and property development industry is now 100% Chinese controlled again. Sadly, those international investors will lose a lot of money, but the homeowners in China will not. They're benefiting from this. The largest shipbuilding industry in the world is in China. The second largest ship owning, shipping and container company is Costco. It's also Chinese. None of the top 10 shipping companies are in America. The world's largest telecommunications company is in China. It's China Mobile. Two of the world's top three oil companies are in China, Sinopec and PetroChina. The number one is Saudi Aramco, which is not an American corporation, despite its American-sounding name. When it comes to beer, China holds the number one, number three, number five, and number seven slot in the top ten beer sales of the world. It's hard to beat that. And I could go on, but I think you get the picture. So number two. The U.S. is currently spending $2 trillion in reshoring many of these companies, and the result will be a catastrophe for China that has already started and will accelerate. Well, part of this may be true. The U.S. is spending a lot of money, but where does the figure $2 trillion come from? Forbes magazine, which I've linked in the description, indicates there's no official budget for it, and it will take a long time. And one of the reasons it will take a long time is because U.S. corporations have no intention of reshoring to the U.S. It's too expensive. If they do reshore, it will be to places in Southeast Asia, Central America, and Africa, if Africa allows them to. So I'm sorry, this one is complete baloney. China does not want to invest... Oh, this is number three. China does not want to invest in technologies like the West did in order to become what the West is now, but took centuries in the country. <gasps> in the contrary, China pushes to be a superpower in just a few decades by forces intellectual property transfer from foreign companies <gasps> and then copies them. Othmar, do you know what a comma is? And then copies them since they are unable to invent anything and what they produce is of shoddy quality. All the gadgets made in China do not last and need to be replaced after a few uses. Well, Othmar, I almost spilt my coffee when you said China does not want to invest in technology. Where are you sleeping? Under a rock? Last year, the Chinese government alone, not the technology companies, the government spent 52 billion US dollars on research and development. China has, since 2017, applied for and had approved more patents than the USA. In 2022, China overtook the USA in scientific publications and now has its own space station, its own quantum computing, the fastest internet connectivity in the world through 100% coverage of 5G, and has already implemented driverless taxis and buses and helicopters in many of its cities, or some. It leads the world not just by being in front, but by installing more green energy technology than the rest of the world combined. You really have got this one wrong, Othmar. And guess what? None of it 
is falling to bits or of shoddy quality. The next one is debt traps. Entire nations forces organ transplant oppresses its own nice productive citizen. Debt traps have been debunked by no less than John Hopkins University's professor Deborah Brodigan. She's not only written a book about it, she's made videos, she's given speeches, and she's convinced academics that the media, where you get your sources from, have got it wrong. Obviously, Othmar, she didn't convince you. Have you read her book? I've linked an article that she wrote about it for a condensed version to help you out. Please, don't argue with me on this. Argue with John Hopkins University. They usually publish a pretty convincing methodology, though, so you'd better have a great argument. Forced organs, now. Transplants are a fantasy made up by Falun Gong. There's absolutely no evidence. Not a single name of a single victim has ever been produced, and not a single person has ever come out of a single Chinese prison minus a single organ. If they had, you can be sure they would have been heralded as heroes by Western media. This is just cultish nonsense. As for the oppression of its own nice citizen, I'm not sure which citizen you're referring to, but I don't know him or her. The Edelman Trust Barometer says 91% of all Chinese people trust their government. Harvard University spent 13 years researching this, and they came up with a number of 95.5% of Chinese people who trust their government in some degree. The Ipsos Global Happiness Index checked in a massive survey of 32 countries, and China came out number one of the 32 countries surveyed. So it's okay to take my word that Chinese people are not oppressed. They're quite happy, actually, if you trust me. But if you don't trust me, then go and tell those three institutions that they're wrong. But you would better have conducted your own qualitative and quantitative research to come up with some empirical evidence to support your statement. Or you'll only look a little bit foolish. The next one was, we, the Western world, need to reverse and accelerate the outsourcing of our economy to China and companies which refuse to need to be boycotted. Imagine shipping resources to China and then shipping back manufactured goods. It is an environmental crime. Globalization only serves the shareholders and not the consumers since replacing the shoddy products once or twice is much more costly. I can teach you English if you want, Mothma. So in this last point, I almost agree with you. Yes, it would be great if the Western world could stop outsourcing to China, but sadly, they can't. Our economies are all interlinked, and from a decoupling point of view, decoupling from China would be catastrophic for any country that tried it. It would make a great deal of sense to stop importing Chinese-made goods, shoddy or otherwise, but the sad fact for you is that you can't. Because in the next 10 years at least, you'll never have the manufacturing capacity to remove China from your supply chains. You can stop buying from China if you're an American corporation, as the US has recently found out. They did. But that only means buying Chinese goods from Mexico or some other place where a middleman puts a profit on something that they sourced from China. So, Othmar, I think you might need to widen your sources. Falun Gong? Peter Zian and Gordon Chang haven't got this right yet, and neither will you, by repeating these uncorroborated media headlines and this unfounded nonsense. So here's my suggestion. Do some Google searches on your Chinese-made computer or device and tell me which of the above facts I've got wrong. Then we can have a discussion. I do appreciate that you have your beliefs and opinions, and you're certainly entitled to hold them. But I absolutely assure you that based on facts, you're wrong. Really sorry to have done that to you, Othmar. Not really. But I do hope you get to see this. And thank you all very much once again for watching my take on China. Please don't forget to like and share this. If you share this, maybe Othmar will see it in more than one place. That would be great. See you next time.